I want to ask you a couple questions about Braun that I've actually wanted to ask you for a long time. But before I do that, what you're just talking about in the book, every chapter has a rule mm-hmm. and there's a chapter towards the end. The rule is star in your role. It's something I talk about all the time yeah. when I talk about players. Um, and it's basically you going down to Atlanta, uh, working for a retailer, working in the stock room. Andy Hyman. Yes. Andy, I was yeah. going to say Andy. And it's how you started this business with the throwback jerseys. And it's ultimately how you met LeBron yes. uh, in an airport. You're wearing a Warren Moon jersey. He asked you where you got the jersey. You guys strike up a friendship. You'd like to think the rest is history. I, I know that it's not. There's, uh, you know, 20, there tw- no re- 20, there- 22 years of work and relationship yeah. building and all that stuff. With LeBron mm-hmm. early on, um, when you look back, you guys were young, young men then. Was there something that you saw in him that gave you confidence that he could handle the enormous expectations and the enormous pressure of being, in Sports Illustrated's words, the chosen one? Not the player, not the talent and the physical ability. Was there Person. something you saw in him that you said, you know, I think he's going to be all right with this pressure and expectation. Yeah, well, the the pressure, the expectation, again, it started over as he became more accomplished. So initially, I would say yes. And the reason why, the superstardom, the selling out, um, they had to move his high school games to college and, and arenas. You know, he's selling out. He He was, at that time... He was selling more tickets than the Cavs. He was in high school. His high school game against Warrensville Heights, there were 20,000 people there. The Cavs were averaging like maybe 11,000, you know, that, that year. Um, but the reason why I say yes is because, and I, I dissect this a little bit different. He's from Akron, Ohio. If you ever been to Akron, there isn't much there, right? So you don't have a ton of options. But what that does is it allows you to be grounded. And because he was grounded, it allowed him to actually have patience in terms of his maturation process of celebrity and success. And so there was no rush to be something that I wasn't. And because of that, it allowed him to continue to strengthen the foundation of himself as a person, and as a player. In addition to that, luckily for him, as he aligned people, and I was the last one to the table, but as he aligned people around him, there was no yes men, and there was nobody in it for them. He's very, extremely lucky in that regard because very few athletes have that around them. No yes men and nobody in it for them. But ultimately, I want to point this out. I know what you're saying. Ultimately, everyone in that room or at that table benefited. Of course. From but, from, from LeBron's greatness, right? Yeah, of course. But 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 you gotta but that wasn't their initial approach or intent, right? Because for me, I was actually in a different position. I had to come down. Because in my neighborhood, I, I'm... Oh, it's in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had to star in my role differently, right? Um, he looked up to Maverick. Maverick played on his, you know, you were underclassman, senior... That's how it works, right? As Even though he was a better player, it don't matter. And so in Randy's case, again, that trust is built because you can count on him. Prompt, professional, right? And so now when you're looking at it through this lens, you start to see how things start to formulate. And again, I didn't have a role, JJ. I didn't have a role. I didn't, I didn't have anything. There was a, and I always, there was a one-lane highway, right? 
So it went from us hanging and still with no role. I didn't make it about me. I remember we were in Chicago. And, you know, we was not even in, in the pros yet. People were asked for autographs or whatnot. And just was tired of signing autographs. And kid, he was like, ah. And I was like, ah, you know, you should sign an autograph, man. Man, I'm tired, but I'm about to say, man. You know, one day, they're not going to want your autograph. And you never know. If that, now, this is a big risk because there's no draft. There's I'm not in the, anything. I'm not, you know, but it's what was right. Yeah. And so he ended up signing the autograph and et cetera. But, but I just wanna, there's not going to be a day where someone doesn't want the brass autograph. No, no, no. But, but you got to remember, but you got to remember, I, he's, he's, he's 18 years old. He's you're seven, spot on then. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's funny looking now, back now. Yeah, now like, it's. Now, yeah, but back then. 97, be like, I need, I need Braun to sign this yeah, throwback but, Lakers 2021, 2022 but I, jersey. But it all, it, it, was, it was the evolution. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying. If I make it about me, if I'm playing a grab, a money grab, and trying to do whatever, I never get to that. People don't understand. We had to build trust. Yeah, yeah. But I also, I didn't become his agent until nine years later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nine years. So I had nine years of, in addition to everything in this book. So when you, when you, when you take everything in the book and then nine more years on top of that in this world, navigating this business, I didn't get an opportunity. I didn't get the opportunity I got because I'm his friend or I'm his brother or cousin or sister or whatever. That wasn't the case. I got the opportunity that I got because he watched me sacrifice and commit and be passionate about it. And that's all the things that the bear down, the chapter, when, we, when I'm talking about bear down, when I'm shooting the four, that's why I never celebrate. I, I've never, I haven't celebrated one deal yet. I'm bearing down because I know, right? And so, I don't get, and, and by the way, the lucky aspect of it, I'm so lucky to have grown up in my dad's store, right? I'm so lucky to have grown up in my environment to teach me things that help me to this day. And as a man, just me and you, us three as men, take status away, all that type of stuff away. I can stand in front of anybody in the world as a man's man. That means more to me than anything, right? The layman's term in that is basic thing, right? You're in jail because this type of stuff happens. You go to jail. I now have to take money to your wife or to your girl for the kids, school clothes, you, she come to visit you, commissary, your box, all that type of stuff. Well, when she opened the door, first time I go, she frying chicken, whatever, cool. By the fifth time I go, she got jeans on, sweater on, hoodie on, whatever. By the fifth, sixth time I go, she got just a T-shirt on. As a man, the integrity in you as a man, that matters. That temptation matters. And that's no different than being in my situation now as an agent and lying to you to do what's best for me so I make money. Yeah. I think what's I, I think what's remarkable about all of all of this, what you're talking about, and going back to to starring in your role, is that it it took so you starred in your role for a long time. Yeah. Before you ever got a bigger role to star in. Way before I was an extra. Pay, yeah. <laughs> I was an extra. 